I'm going to tell you about something that's happened to me a long time ago that it was very important and it seemed very insignificant. I arrived at the station to catch a train and I missed the train by less than a minute and I had one and a half hours to wait. And I soon realised I had a choice and the choice is I could be very irritable for an hour and a half coming up with all sorts of things in my mind about oh I should have done this, I should have done that or I could just relax into the experience and I spent one of the most interesting hours and a half of my life because what I did is because there really wasn't anything else to do and I became fully present to everything that I could possibly experience in that station. I noticed the people, I noticed the buildings, the forms, the shapes, what went on, movements, and I really thoroughly enjoyed my hour and a half wait for that train. And years later I went to Jamaica and I spent time sitting in the dirt with Rastafarians reasoning, that's a expression they use for having a stimulating, useful conversation, they call it reasoning. And there I was introduced more formally to the concept of the observer. And they suggested that it's one of the most helpful things you can do as a human being, is to learn to observe. And you can do this in two really obvious ways. You can, as I did at the station, you can turn your powers of observation outward and you can observe what's going on in your immediate surroundings. And because you're not going anywhere, because you're taking your time, it gives you opportunity to notice all sorts of things. That's one kind of observation. The other kind of observation is to go within. And this is what people do when they're meditating, when they're sitting down, and the thoughts come in and then they pass, and then another thought comes and it passes. The person is doing an internal observation. And that, that brings me to the next thing that I picked up from the Rastafarians. And they would say this to everyone they ever had a chance to have a conversation with. And what they would say, they would say this, they would say, know yourself. Their view was there was nothing more important than getting to know yourself. And if your life is one succession of headlong rushes into parties and appointments and jobs and interviews and entertainments, you might never actually get the time to do any of that. However, often life plays tricks on people and the next thing you know they're out of a job, unemployed, out of a relationship, whatever, and they've got all this time. And that time can give them the opportunity to start to get to know themselves. So you can either wait for life to make it happen to you, or you can consider that as an idea. Getting to know yourself. What is it that I really like? What is it I dislike? What is it that I do with myself? How am I in certain situations? What is it that makes me fly off the handle? What is it that presses my buttons? What is it that causes me to become relaxed and open? You've got the rest of your life to explore this one. And by spending time observing outside and inside and getting to know yourself, you will uncover great riches. It's a journey with a lot of treasures to discover hidden within it. Know yourself. Yeah, what happens when you find out about yourself and you don't particularly like it? Ah, yeah, well, when you find out about yourself and you don't particularly like it, and I was referring you to a book called The Breakthrough Experience by John Demartini. One of the most useful books about relationships I've ever come across. He has an extremely disturbing premise in this book. And the premise is that everything you dislike about yourself or somebody else, he's got a name for it. He calls them the negative disowned parts. So he says if you're in a relationship with someone, for example, and they really irritate you and they've got these mannerisms and ways of being that you just cannot stand and you're crawling up the walls, well, that's telling you something, that's actually a very helpful clue to you getting to know yourself better because actually those things that are irritating you about the way they are, guess what, yes, you're like that too. And although you may resist this one, it's a really worthwhile book because he's got a process he takes you through if you choose to go through it. It's called the Quantum Collapse Process. And in the Quantum Collapse Process you get to understand how everything that you don't like in others and in yourself are actually really rich nuggets of gold to be dug up and when you do that you start to come to some rather amazing realizations and it's a very helpful way to get to a place which is something that I think most of us realize is very desirable and that's self-acceptance. If you can love and accept yourself all sorts of things unfold. Cut.